everybody. The Indian hockey team was the first to qualify for the 2016 Olympics. But now 380 days before we approach Rio, the coach has been sacked and the sport is in turmoil like once again. I have Ayaz Mehman with me on the sportscast. Ayaz, what, well, what, do you, can, what can one say? What do you make of this decision? Look, uh, you know, I mean, there's been a blame game going yeah. on. Uh, so you've got Narendra Batra, who's the head of Hockey India. Hockey India, yeah. And obviously the coach himself, they've been trading charges. Or the ex-coach now, yeah. because he's no longer the coach. Uh, so it, it's not been a happy situation. Mm -hmm. But the story to be followed is that in five years, you've had five coaches. Yeah. And there's been a turnover, which would, you know, it's an astonishing turnover. And you had some very formidable names exactly. there. Exactly. Terry uh, Walsh, Terry sacked Walsh. right after India won. Yeah, I mean, he, he actually withdrew because of contractual yeah. obligations. Yeah. But obviously, things were not going right. Yeah. So, you've got, you've got five coaches in five years, yeah. which shows you that something is amiss. Mm -hmm. Now, exactly what that, you know, where the blame lies is very difficult to say. But I would say... That if hockey India is interested in Indian hockey, yeah. then obviously it needs to look within rather than just addressing it without. So previous outside. coaches have also come out and blamed the administration. Yes. You know, uh, not just uh, Vanas right now. He is very openly said that you know he had issues with that how he was treated. And the, the issue which he highlighted to yeah. me that is very disturbing when he claims now obviously Narendra Batra claims otherwise. Yeah, that's true. He says that Batra came onto the field mm -hmm. and after spoke the match, to the players yeah. after the match and said. If you don't play well against Pakistan, then your you know your sponsorship <laughs> will be affected. Yeah. Which I think is a very de yeah. if it is true, it's a very demoralizing way of communicating with the players. Maybe he, his intentions were all mm -hmm. you know fine, because he is after all running the sport. But that's not the best way to do it. I yeah. think that's really the the message that I get. And uh, like like you said, so Joseph Rasa, who was a coach before, he was he made a statement saying the administrators treated me like pigs, and they really don't have any idea how to run the sport. And which is which is quite disturbing. I mean, I don't know how the players are coping with so many changes, heading right into the Europe tour, where they're going to play France and Spain again. They can't be very happy. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I think, unfortunately, what has happened in uh, Indian hockey, and that's hmm. my surmise, is that the players themselves have been divided okay. over the past many years. And I don't mean just the current mm -hmm. players, active players, even former players. The whole division which took place in the Indian Hockey Federation, there were two camps yeah. led by two different people and players. Yeah. You know, so there's not been the synchronicity that yeah. one would have liked or the unity that one would have liked and which I think is still affecting Indian hockey very seriously. The other school of thought is that why are we going for foreign coaches? Because they all seem to be having a problem mm -hmm. either adjusting to the Indian hockey uh, administration or the Indian ethos, yeah. which is how to deal with players. But I don't know if that is entirely true either because we've got Harinder Singh in the past who was the coach who also didn't last. Yeah. So one way or the other. But now there's a little spin in the story so mm -hmm. to speak because Dhanraj Pillai, if I've mm -hmm. read the newspapers correctly, uh, has thrown his hat in the yeah. ring. He's willing He's to be saying, the coach. Yeah. So that's, For the that's moment it seems that Altman's will be the coach. Mm. Till till they're till they're the saying Olympics. Altman's is there till Olympics. Till the Olympics. That's a one year term. But yeah. anyway, these guys don't last more than a year. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. So... Clearly, things are very amiss with the administration and the players and the coaches, and they need to Sadly figure it so, out. so, because you know, having qualified for the Olympics, you would have thought it would be all systems go. We but qualified first. We should have yes. been preparing right now. This is when we should have been at our best. And look, let's be realistic. We should be looking for a place in the top six. Mm -hmm. You know, to keep saying that we should win the medal. Yeah. Maybe a little far fetched, but. If you go on like this, you can't even finish in the top six. Yeah. And we are ranked eight right now. Yeah. There's so. a lot that the team needs to do. Absolutely. And they're because going to eight Europe. Eight to six is a big jump. Yeah. We go to Europe and we're going to play France and Spain. Yeah. And it's his first first tour, Altman's as the coach. And it remains to be seen what but he can the, do. The, the silver lining in the cloud is that he's been the high performance director for a while. So he is acquainted with the system and with the players. Now he takes over as the coach also. Whether he's, you know, if effective enough as a coach, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Okay, so that's Hockey India. And coming to the BCCI, the other <laughs> administration, <laughs> sports administration that's always in the news. But they've announced the squad for the test series against Sri Lanka. And they've taken to social media to do that. And they, they released a wine of all the players, <laughs> which is quite nice. I mean, it's good to see BCCI adopting social media and interacting with the fans in such a novel way. But they have become more proactive. I'll tell yeah. you how else? Because mm -hmm. they've got what they call BCCI TV, mm -hmm. which is their own digital platform. And where they've been interviewing the players, yeah. even as we speak today, uh, there's an interview with Rohit Sharma, which mm -hmm. has been put out, where he's spoken quite candidly about yeah. how he needs to firm up a place yeah. in the test team for himself. So I, I think that's a good move yeah. because 
while the BCCI TV, everybody has accused them of being opaque and not transparent and you know too cloistered. If they expose the players, even through their own medium, as, you know, to start with, and in fact, I think they should be letting them talk exactly. quite freely yeah, to, to the, the world fans. At large. That's, that's, how, yeah, that's yeah. how the world is evolving. And but instead of keeping them clamped down, mm -hmm. I think this is a good thing. Cool. Okay, so what do you make of the test squad? Amit Mishra makes a comeback after four years. What does that say? I think because Karan Sharma is injured, yeah. the, young, the younger of the mm -hmm. two. I mean, Karan Sharma himself is 27. Amit, Amit Mishra is what, 32, 33, yeah, 30. not a young fellow, but ripe in terms of experience so and look I think the his selection was prompted by the fact that Yasir Shah of Pakistan mm -hmm. did very well yeah. in Sri Lanka as a leg spinner so they hope that he can do something similar uh, but I think this is the last throw of the dice for Amit Sharma, uh, Amit, Mishra. No, Amit Mishra if he doesn't come good now then uh, I think his international but career is in the door. Isn't this like taking a step back I mean shouldn't we be encouraging more uh, do we not have good leg spinners coming up through the ranks? Uh, to go for him I think again? Not really. Yeah. You know, Karan Sharma was your best yeah. bet. Otherwise, you've got Piyush Chawla who's also been around for 10 years. So, not I'm, I'm not one of those who feel every time you select a team, you should only choose young players. Mm. You need to choose a squad which is likely to win you matches. Yeah. And there has to be a good blend of young and old. Experience. In fact, this team, Amit Mishra might be the, <laughs> the oldest. <laughs> yeah, possibly. Yeah. You know, because Dhoni yeah. is not around. Yeah. So, there's nobody else who's of that age. Maybe Harbhajan Singh. Mm -hmm. So, there are, there's Harbhajan and Mishra. Yeah. And they're spinners. They also take a little while to mature. So, I don't think age is the issue there. Okay. So, I mean, there's nothing to worry about. Not yet. No. I and think Amit Mishra should worry about his performance. Yeah. You know. Four years he's been in yes. oblivion. So, if he wants to extend his international career, he has to he has to do well here. Yeah. So, to Harbhajan Singh. Yeah. It's not only Amit Mishra. Yeah. So, that's, that's the oldies that we're talking about. For the Indian of the week, this week, we ignored him last week, but he won a title again and there's no way we could have ignored him. It's a 10-year-old golfer. Yes. Indian golfer. And very humble background. Yeah. <laughs> so, you tell us. Yeah. So, uh, he's, you know, he's known as the son of a milkman because he comes from Haryana, Shubham Jaglin. But he's been in New Delhi for the last few years and he's been coached by, you know, he's been getting training, he's been sponsored. And he's making these trips abroad and, and they're, winning. They're talking of him as the, the next big thing. Next Tiger Woods. Because he's also very young, 10 yeah. year old. He's so <laughs> Tiger Woods was 3 or 4 when he started yeah. helping the So that's 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 him. He's he's won in uh, Las Vegas this week. Yeah. And he'd won in San Diego the week before. So, so my, my golf, technique. Like, uh, that's 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 the surprising bit here. That's golf. That's yeah, it's surprising. I mean, it's 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 very welcome mm -hmm. in the in the context of Indian sport. But I think really the the issue now is sustenance. Mm -hmm. You know, we've had prodigies who fizzle out very fast. Very few prodigies actually go on to become fantastic players when they are, you know, old yeah. enough. When, so yeah. you might have a Tiger Woods, you might have an Andre Agassi, and mm. you might have a Sachin Tendulkar. But I can bet you can't name twenty others. Yeah. You know, in the whole history yeah. of sports. So. Even for anybody who's 10 years old and winning major kind of accolades, yeah. from here what you do because the pressure on him will keep increasing the more he does better and better. Yeah. But the good thing is he, he seems to be in good hands right now. You know, yeah, he seems to be in good He's hands. being sponsored by Amit Lutharia as I said yeah. and he's getting the backing to make sure that he keeps doing well. He keeps yeah, so backing is not just the only thing. Mm -hmm. Backing is very crucial yeah. but it's also your own motivation, mm -hmm. your coaching, your yeah. support staff and all of that. Yeah. So that's that's golf. From golf, let's just go to wrestling. There's a new league in town that's just been launched. I was there actually. At yeah. The launch in, <laughs> how in how was the launch? Pro wrestling league that's being so Sushil. Just been launched. All the all the big guys were there. Yeah. You know. So at the launch. Yeah. At the launch, Sushil Kumar, of course, was there. Was good to see a lot of women wrestlers. Look, I think wrestling, like mm -hmm. kabaddi, is very intrinsic yeah. to the Indian kind of way of life. At least in vast sections of the country, the north. Virtually, mm -hmm. you know, Haryana, Punjab, Rajasthan, MP, they are very wrestling oriented. Yeah. That's where our wrestlers uh, so are coming from. Yeah. You know, and wrestling goes into the very inards of yeah, India. It's a, yeah, you would, you would say that's a very rural sport, you know, there are people who've come out from. But you know, we thought of Kabaddi as a rural sport and exactly, became a big so hit. It's, so, it's become so I, I think wrestling can be a very, very big draw. Yeah. It must be done well, it mm -hmm. must be governed well. It can't, you know, a lot of the. Sometimes the problem is that you can end up becoming a one season wonder. Mm. The league comes up first season, everybody is, you know, enthused yeah. about it and then next season nothing happens or it fizzles out or you have a problem with the federation. Mm -hmm. Like, badminton. Are, like, like badminton. Like badminton. Unfortunately, badminton league was a big hit. It was very popular. Very popular, but there's been no second season. So, these are the 
there are learnings to be taken yeah. from badminton league from the IPL from Indian hockey league yeah. and then become stronger I think I have a very strong gut feel about wrestling wrestling but do you think this is the way forward for sports in general to grow in India at least we've had a league for almost every sport now we have I think the problem football, with all these Kabaddi. federations apart from yeah. cricket was monetization yeah how to make the sport financially sustainable it seems more and more that the sponsors are willing to back leagues uh, because it may be a little easier to create mm -hmm. create brand loyalty yeah. and you know stuff like that or team loyalty so I mean how they all fare we'll have to wait for a 10 15 year cycle to see mm -hmm. but if there is some interest I think uh, I think that's great yeah, it's a good thing it's yeah, a good boost for the sport yeah. so that that starts in November and we'll obviously track it when it does and yes. it, it sounds exciting you know and it's going to be not just Indian wrestlers yeah it's going to be a, it's going to be a global kind yeah. of a collection of wrestlers and plus uh, six six men and five women as yes. you said in a team which yes. is great I mean it it'll be fantastic. good to see female wrestlers also you know getting their day in the limelight so yeah and I think that's the good thing about wh what we saw in badminton and mm -hmm. what we are seeing in wrestling perhaps hopefully in kabaddi later is that both the sexes mm -hmm. are being involved yeah so the badminton teams had both men and women yeah the wrestling team has both men and women Great. So we will obviously. So it's an equal opportunity situation for you know both. And they're putting a lot of money in it right now as well. So. Yes, I mean let's not compare to IPL mm -hmm. because that's a very unfair comparison. Cricket was already a very yeah. rich sport and it's become richer. But for wrestling and kabaddi and all these other sports to even get a livelihood out of just the sport is a big jump forward. Mm -hmm. So that's 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 quite the interesting story of the week. I think the launch of the pro wrestling league. So uh, we'll watch out for it in November. Let's see how it does, how it fares, which are the teams, what are the team members. And uh, next week we have our big before before you wind up. Yeah. I just want to make a point. Yeah. This is about the three cricketers. The IPL. Srishant, yeah. The Rajasthan Royals cricketers, yeah. Srishant, Ankit Chawan, and uh, Ajit Chandila. The case against them being you know dropped yep. by the sessions court in Delhi. Now there are some ramifications of that. One is that the Delhi High Court has dismissed the case, mm -hmm. but the BCCI says our ban will stay. Yeah. Which means they cannot start playing, playing again. again. And I think the BCCI is still, uh, it's got its own internal mm -hmm. mechanisms, and the ACU report yeah. has not been very complimentary to these players, so they are they are abiding by that. The Delhi players, I mean the the Rajasthan Royals players, can go and petition the court for a reinstatement. But remember, team selection is still with the BCCI. BCCI. You may be freed and yeah. the court may advise you, but if you don't want to select a player, you can't, you can't select. select. So it's not going to be an easy comeback for them. them. They've got for the moment now the stigma kind of or the, yeah. the Some stain respite the from. But the Delhi police can also go for a review petition to the Delhi High Court. So, so all said and done, yeah. I think that they're still at the mercy of the BCCI. Yes, yeah. well, <laughs> isn't that true for cricket in India? Well, anyway. that's of the administration, you know, yeah. that's how it is everywhere. Yeah. So that's that's okay. So we'll be tracking that too as well. Let's yes. see if she. You we'll think see she some developments can. because uh, the BCCI has said the case will be taken up mm -hmm. at the next working committee meeting whenever it happens. Yeah. So that's not too far away. Mm -hmm. So we'll wait and see what happens there. So Srishan's career on the line. It's well, we keep talking only about Srishan, <laughs> but the other two guys also equally. You know. Yeah, just as <laughs> their careers too. So as we as I was saying, just wrap up. Uh, we're keeping track of everything that happens in the coming week. Join us again next week as we preview the Premier League which starts off. That'll be fun. Ayaz. That'll be great fun. Yeah. Yes. That'll Looking forward fun. to some football finally. Like it's been a long break. It's let's, been a long <laughs> let's get back to football and league football. So join us again next week at 5 p.m. Thanks for watching guys. Bye. <laughs>